In the rush and bustle of our everyday lives, it's easy to forget that none of us is immortal. None of us will live forever. It's always sad when someone dies, especially if it's someone close. But it isn't the end of everything, because even though people die every day, for the whole human race, life goes on. There are new people born every day. And they grow up to have children of their own. which means that there are lots of people on the Earth. The problem is too many people rather than too few. We do make quite an impact on the world around us. But remember, we all started in the same simple way, when two special cells got together. One of those was a male sex cell, a sperm. The other was a female sex cell, an egg. A new life starts at the moment when the sex cells come together, the moment which is called fertilization. There are lots of ways fertilization can happen. Different animals have different ways of getting the sex cells together. These fish are digging a trench in the bed of the stream. It's the mating season. A male and a female fish swim together. Ripples of excitement spread along their bodies. They both squirt their sex cells into the water, sperm from the male and eggs from the female, meeting outside their bodies. They're very close, but it's more a matter of luck if the sperm reaches and joins up with the egg. As they cover the eggs, the fish can't be sure that they're all fertilized. Toads use a similar chancy system. They spend a lot of time on dry land, but they always go back to the water for mating. First, the males fight to get a female. This is a string of toad's eggs. The male tries to make sure all the eggs get fertilized. So he actually climbs onto the back of the female and holds on. He gets as close as possible. The male feels when the female is laying her long string of eggs. He releases his own sperm at the same time. This is frog spawn, fertilized frog's eggs. Frogs are very similar to toads. The male stays very close. There's a much better chance that his sperm will fertilize the eggs. But it's still a matter of luck. In a few weeks, the fertilized eggs hatch out. They turn into tadpoles. There are tadpoles everywhere. But with no parents to look after them, most of them won't survive.
but a few always do, and that's what counts. By contrast, human females, women, produce only 12 eggs a year. So we need a much better system for fertilizing them, getting them together with the man's sperm. The eggs are produced deep inside the woman's body. So the man's penis is inserted into the woman's vagina. A kind of rippling movement in the sex organs squirts out the sperm and helps it along. The sperm has to swim only a short distance to reach the egg. This is called internal fertilization. It takes place inside the body. There's a very good chance of fertilization taking place. These are turtles. They use internal fertilization too. The sperm is put inside the female, so only the females need to come out onto the shore to lay their eggs. They begin a frantic effort to dig a hole to protect the eggs. Sadly, though, all this effort doesn't always work. The exposed eggs make an enjoyable meal for other hungry animals. And there are other reasons why turtles lay so many eggs in the first place. Happily, turtles lay so many eggs that some babies always survive. They go back to the sea to grow up and make babies of their own. But there are other ways of making sure enough babies survive. These ducks are real show-offs, but that's important because that's how they get to know each other, how they become a couple. Again, the sperm is passed from the male into the female. They need to lay only a few eggs, because it's pretty certain that every one has been fertilized. And, unlike the turtle, the parents look after the eggs. Because they're a couple, they can take turns keeping the eggs warm and safe. And the new chicks can't look after themselves. It's the parents who feed them, keep them warm, guide them, and generally look after them, especially when danger threatens. Now let's see how some other animals make sure enough babies survive. These are wildebeest. Wildebeest babies feed on their mother's milk. Animals that do that are called mammals. 
wildebeest mothers carry their babies inside them for a long time. Even a newly born wildebeest baby already looks like a small version of its parents. And it's only a matter of minutes before it can stand up and start to feed. That's vitally important when danger lurks close by. For the small baby to survive, it must soon be able to run with the herd. But there are some things it can't run away from. Like extremely hot weather. It can be very hot and very windy and very dusty. Most young animals are simply not strong enough to survive in these sorts of conditions. In other parts of the world, the bitter cold is just as great an enemy. Which is why many animals have their babies at a certain time of the year. Lambs and springtime, the two often go together in our minds. And that's no accident. The new lambs miss the cold weather and have as much of the warm weather as possible, so that they grow big and strong before the next winter. But if the weather is bad in spring, it can be a disaster. rescue this time, but normally these sheep would not survive on their own. That's part of what makes people different. We can survive. We know how to build shelters to protect ourselves. And we know how to keep warm by lighting a fire. So for people, climate and timing are not so important. Human babies are born at any time of the year. It's got nothing to do with the weather. But that doesn't mean a woman can always become pregnant. There are only certain times. Let's see how this happens. We can start when an egg has just been released by an ovary. It's part of a monthly round of regular happenings, so we're going to mark off the days around the outside. If there are no sperm about, or the egg isn't fertilized, it goes straight on down the tube. If it had been fertilized, it would have fastened itself onto the wall of the tube. That part of the tube is called the womb. It has a special lining to hold the egg. The lining gets thicker when an egg is on the way. If there's no use for the thickened lining, it comes away. It passes out through the bottom of the tube, the vagina, as a flow of blood. This is known as having a period, menstruation. It all happens in about 28 days, perhaps a day or two more or less. In young girls, it can vary a bit, but it does usually settle down. Having a period is part of being a woman. 
it's quite normal for an egg to be released and yet not fertilized. The lining of the womb thickens but isn't needed, so the body lets it go. That way, there's a fresh lining when the egg does need it, when the egg is fertilized. Periods stop whilst the baby's growing in the womb during pregnancy. In fact, that's usually the first sign that a woman is pregnant. From then on, the story is also about care. First of all, care for the pregnant mother herself with regular visits to the doctor. today. I'm okay. No problems. Yeah. And Nicholas is coping all right. Seems to be, yes. He's quite Seems happy about things. Be, yes. Have you had any contractions? Yes, on Monday they started and I think the baby's has gone, gone down, down a bit. Did they last for long? About two yeah. hours. And not particularly strong? No, very mild. No, it's fine. And then they wore off again. Yes. No, that's fine. And otherwise you're all right? Fine, yes. Good. It's fine. And the caring continues after the baby is born. One of the most important things for a baby is food, suckled from its mother's breasts. Are you going to come over and talk to Hannah? Are you going to come and talk to Hannah? A close bond builds up between mother and baby, and with the rest of the family. Should be a nice feed. You used to have milk, didn't you, when you were a baby? You have mum's milk? Okay. There's certainly a lot of us around. So the system our bodies use for reproduction does seem to work. We are successful at keeping the human race going. We're successful at looking after ourselves and making babies. It's partly because there's a new egg and a new womb lining every month. And it's partly because our bodies are made so that fertilization can happen inside the woman. But it's more than that. It's also because of the way we care for our children after they're born. The way we protect them and help them for a very long time until they can look after themselves. Right back. 